Spirit of Truth, we're going to pick up this morning where we left off uh, last week, uh, part of this continuation of, of knowledge is power. We're going to look at this morning uh, the founding fathers and their original intent with, with this nation. And, uh, and before we can get there, we have to first go back and where we left off on the colonists, what brought them here to start with. Uh, with the help of the Spirit of Truth, turn with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, we're told in verse 8. To open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such that are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth and judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Help us, Father, in the name of Jesus. To open your mouth. To open your mouth for... What Solomon here calls the dumb and the cause. It means to, to, to speak up. To speak up for those that can't or that won't. For those that are dumb and the cause or those that are tongue-tied or those that are put to silence. Either out of fear or just out of where they're at, uh, they, they, can't, they can't speak out. We're supposed to speak out. Amen. We're supposed to speak out. God always gives us a platform. He always gives us a voice. And, and, and as we were, we were learning last week, we have no position to be idle. We, there's, no, there's nowhere to sit by and be idle. Yes, our God is on the throne. Yes, Jesus is coming back to claim his church. Yes, praise God. He'll rule forever and ever. But we have something to do. We have something to do in the meantime. You cannot sit idly by and just praise Jesus and not get involved with the things when you see those that are dumb in the cause, not either hearing or not speaking up themselves, somebody has to be the watchman, somebody has to be the warner, somebody has to be blowing trumpets, that would be the body of Christ, that is the church. Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Do you believe him? I believe him. So we have nothing to fear. We must speak out. Now, turn to Proverbs 24, because I'm going to give you a little bit of scripture this morning. Uh, before we get into our history lesson, it's just amazing how much, uh, how little history <laughs> that, that, that our kids learn in school today. It is amazing. It, it is amazing to sit and listen to my 12 year old tell me the things that they teach them in school. Not, not once is, is the Civil War discussed or the Revolutionary War or any, anything for that matter that has any precedence or, or any actual facts to the establishment of this nation. They get what the, the, the secular world wants to give them. And that's what they get. Yeah, exactly. Proverbs 24, beginning of verse 19. We're told to fret not thyself because of evil men. Neither be thou envious at the wicked. Sister's kind of talking about that this morning. As dark as, as it gets, it doesn't matter how black the world is. Praise God that you can have joy unspeakable in Christ Jesus. Fret not yourselves. Don't worry about it. The Bible told us these things were coming. Jesus plainly foretold these days. There's nothing to be upset about. It's all go, uh, going according to his plans. He's in charge, even though the wicked might think they're in charge. God is in charge. Verse 20 says, For there shall be no reward to the evil man, and the candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them, listen to this, that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? What, what was the campaign running on in 2008? Change. Change. Change from what? Meddle not with those that are given to change. Run, get away from those people that are given to change. Change uh, in the Greek, shalna, which means to fold, to duplicate, to alter, to double, to disguise, or to pervert. And that is exactly what has taken place. They have perverted false doctrine, false preachers. They have perverted the gospel. And in the case of, of in Washington, D.C., they have perverted, altered, or changed our Congress, our Constitution, our Senate, and our House, it's all meaningless for the most part. They just bypass it. They've altered things to fit their agendas. That's why we're, we're told not to get, be entangled and, and, and run with those that are given to change. 
Change ain't always a good thing. Paul tells us to be content with whatever state we're in. But if we're always looking for something else. Right? If I just had a few more dollars, if I just had a little more money, I could just be content with where you're at and don't be so quick to change because change is not always a good thing. Change is not always a good thing. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. I promise you we'll get to some history. Proverbs chapter 1. And uh, beginning at verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1 beginning at verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us and let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for innocent blood without cause. Or for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in the lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Let us all have one purse. You know what that's called in the 21st century or what that's called in the political realm? Socialism. Communism, socialism, let us all have one purse. I understand 50% of you Americans have worked for your living and, and you've earned everything that you've got, but hey, these people over here that don't want to work, they're entitled to have what you've got, so you give them what you have. That's casting in your lot and let's all have in one purse. That's, co that's socialism. That has changed for sure. That is not what America's founded on. That's not the, it's, it's all to create a welfare state. It's all to create people that are enslaved to their government. Same things happened in Cuba. The same things have happened in Russia. To go back and look at the history. It's not a pretty picture for any of those places. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. You, 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 would, you would almost think as if God knew what was coming, huh? Right. <laughs> he, he writes it all down. Proverbs 4, beginning in verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Don't even run with them, he said. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, if your light is shining on the darkness, if you're exposing the darkness, it is a bright light and they hate you. Yes. Let your light shine anyway. <laughs> Let your lights shine anyway. The Bible says the lamp of the wicked, his candle is going to be put out. doesn't say nothing about the lamp of the righteous. The path of the justice is a shining light that shines more and more into a perfect day. The way of the wicked, look at this, is as darkness. And they know not at what they stumble. The wicked, even though it's broad daylight, they're walking around as if they're in the dark. And they don't even see the traps coming because they're the ones setting the snares right you roll us down it'll return unto you. You, you you set a snare you'll be the one caught in it that's what they're doing today they're laying traps for Americans they're laying traps particularly for Christian patriotic Americans but they're going to be the ones caught in the snares they're going to be the ones caught in the snares Proverbs chapter 5 beginning in verse 21 Here's why. Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Do you believe him? I believe him. Guess what? The church, we're still here. So as long as we're still here, the gates of hell cannot prevail against his church. So well, it gets back to the point, how much ground are you going to give the wicked one? How much ground are you going to give the enemy? Because he can only have what you give him. He is trodden underfoot. He is a defeated foe. Defeated I said he was defeated. There ain't nobody listening. Amen. He's defeated. He is defeated. He is defeated and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So let's act like it. You should not be afraid of your government that's trying to turn socialistic right under your face. You should not be afraid of false preachers behind pulpits. You should not be afraid of the devil. You should not be afraid of dying. You should fear nothing. Bold as lines is the way you ought to be. Bold as lions and just as loud. You can hear a lion roar for miles off, make the hair stand up on your neck. That's the way a child of God would do with the devil when you know the word of God and when it's in you and when you're proclaiming it. 
It's like a roaring lion to him. She shivers up his worthless back. I bet, I guarantee it. Proverbs chapter 5, verses 21 through 23. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. God sees what is taking place, and guess what? Not only does God see it, he's taking it all in. He knows why they're doing this for that, and he knows why we're doing this for him. And he's taking it all in. He sees it all, and he's taking it all in. Verse 22 says, His own iniquities, his own sins shall take hold of the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. The very things that they're doing, the very things that they are doing to cripple America, to take us down, are going to be what takes them down. The very things that they're doing to shut up the gospel of Christ, to try to keep you from preaching the gospel, is going to be the very same thing that takes them down. They only win when you concede. They're paper tigers. They're paper tigers. Think about it. Think how many Americans are in America. Think how many Americans in America that are actually Americans and that are armed to the teeth, for that matter. The biggest anti-gun control president in history has burned the biggest gun and ammunition buyout in United States history. Washington's taking note. They know it. They realize it. See, you don't have freedom unless the government is afraid of the people. When the people is afraid of the government, you're enslaved. You're enslaved. We have nothing to fear. The baths are for the body's presence to the Lord. To die is gain. We've been through it. We already know it. So you have nothing to worry about. You have nothing to fear. Right? You have nothing to fear except not doing any fearing God is the only thing you had to fear fearing God fearing coming up short and not doing what you would have him do he would not have you have innocence running to the slaughter I can promise you that he would not have you to have people that can't see or can't hear or are not looking he would not have you not try to get their attention I can promise you that now when you reach out and you get their attention and, and you've sowed your seed you're, that's, that's, that's it for you your responsibility's done. You don't have to take them up under the arm. You don't have to nuss them down to the altar. You don't have to get them saved. You just have to sow the seeds and you have to blow the trumpets and God will deal with them. Yes. If they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. Because it ain't you they're rejecting. It's the God that sent you. Verse 23 says, He shall die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Why will he die without instruction? Because he ain't going to seek the word of truth. He's not going to seek the word of God. We have learned this morning already that people that are, that are into socialist agendas, bad. People that are into change, bad. There's nothing new under the sun. So you should stick with the established, prescribed way. When America was formed, America was formed for a reason. It gets us back to the colonists. Why did they come? Why did they traverse those dangerous waters to escape the tyranny of England? It was for religion. It was because they wanted to worship God in spirit and in truth, and they weren't allowed to. When the, Pur the Puritan concept of worship, which includes uh, really no dogma or no ceremonies for that matter, uh, no formal book of prayers. Y'all ever heard those? Book of prayers? They used to, you know, a lot of these Orthodox churches would have a book of prayer to where people had written prayers down. And you, you go through, it's kind of like a Catholic mass or one of these Greek Orthodox churches. You'll go in and you'll just chant things over and over again. They're, that's not what the Puritans wanted to do. They wanted to worship God in spirit and in truth the way Christ said that you worship God. Christ said the flesh profiteth nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. So the Puritans knew this. They all wanted to be able to read the word of God for themselves and to teach their kids to read the word of God for themselves and have freedom and not worry about being persecuted for doing so. Now, they, uh, they objected because as we covered last week, they were compelled to support the church through tithes and levies and taxes. Uh, what do we say at Living Waters? Look, if you don't have nothing but a paper clip, put a paper clip in. We need paper clips too, right, to keep paper. God knows what you... There, there is no, there's no levies, no tithes, no expectations put on anybody. But in England, 
And like a lot of churches around here, you can't even become members of unless you let them have your checking account to where they can automatic withdraw and automatic deposit into their banking account. There's actually churches around here now to where you fill out credit forms before they'll accept you as members. Sickening, saddening, but the sober in truth. Matter of fact, half of we're not even dressed good enough to walk in and love me. Some of these churches, oh, brother, you, 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 you just better off stay at home. How do you think our Savior would react with his dirty feet and all in his dirty robe walking in? Wonder how he would be received in some of these fluty, snooty places that require tithes and levies and taxes. They preferred to worship solemnly in humble surroundings and in direct communication with God. Like I said before, kind of like us. Uh, we're, we have humble surroundings. We're in direct communication with God. We don't believe we have to go through no statues. We don't have to bow down to no images. We don't have to go through no man that is appointed on this earth as a mediator. There's one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. And if the spirit of truth resides in you, you have direct access to the throne of God. You don't have to pray to those stupid little statues. You don't have to bow down. You don't have to say, repeat. You don't have to do none of that, those ritualistic chants. Those are false God worship. God is angry with that style of worship. And that's part of the reason when he unleashes his judgment and his wrath, it's on people like that that hear the truth and they keep rejecting it. And they go on with their false worship anyway. Now, they, uh, the, these, uh, these precepts that the Puritans had, uh, which was wanting to worship according to, to their own conscience. What's the Bible tell us? To whom one esteem anything sin, to him it is sin. Well, then that means to me something might be sin, and to you it might not be. If you esteem something sin and I don't, it might be sin to you, but to me it might not be. It's whatever convicts you in your heart that that's, a, that's sin to you. And that's the way the Puritans wanted to worship. They didn't want to have somebody tell them what was right and wrong. The Word of God does that through the spirit of truth in the individual believer. Right? They figured that out early on. And boy, they were, they were hated for it, weren't they? They were hated, hated for it. Now, attendance to church services in England... And these days, and, and by their nonconformity, by them not conforming or rebelling, the, the civil wars and, and all these little uprisings in Britain were getting worse and worse and worse. They'd just come in and they'd, they'd wipe out whole, whole towns, whole, whole households. If a man of God was called, they would kill him, try to silence him up, keep him from preaching. You remember the book Pilgrim's Progress? Written by Bunyan is down. That's the only other book. That the only book that's ever outsold that book is the Holy Bible. You know where he wrote that book at? Most of 90 some percent of in prison. Why? Because he would not bow down to England and declare himself a preacher of the state. He was a God called preacher, and he was not going to associate himself with England's religion. Or would their denominations, Calvinism, Lutheran, Catholicism, whatever it was, he was not going to tie himself down with that. He was a called man of God and, and, and would willing rather and did endure prison rather than saying, than denouncing his beliefs and saying, I preach for the Church of England or, or whatever else. He wouldn't do it. And he spent a lot of time in jail and he may, he may even, in fact, grow old there. But attendance service to churches was compulsory. They made you go to church. They made you go to church in order that they could keep up with you so that they could know how much money that was expected and so they could also kind of know what was going on. Because how many of you know a lot of times you get a bunch of people together, they got loose lips? How many of you know that? Yeah. And how many of you know that a lot of times in England they had people sitting around just with big ears listening? Running back, running back, telling what they'd heard. Running back, telling what they'd heard. It wouldn't be long, those people, they'd be dead. They'd be dead or turn up missing. They'd charge them with witchcraft and all kinds. It was crazy. A lot of crazy things was happening during the 1700s. Now, their surveillance was total. <laughs> they had no freedom. No freedom. And their duty to their masters or, or, or those 
that were above them, if they did not bow down to them, as I've already stated, it, the penalties, it, they were severe imprisonment and or jail or, or killing you. And as the Puritan movement, as they grew stronger, as they grew more uh, numerical, uh, so did their determination. They became bolder. See, when one child of God stands up for the principles of God, that emboldens another child of God to stand up for the principles of God. And when you have two stand up, then you've got four standing up. And if you've got four standing up, then you'll have eight. And it just multiplies. But guess what? Somebody has to stand. Somebody has to stand. You've got to start. You've got to start somewhere. It ain't just the preacher's jobs. The preacher's job is to equip the church. The church's job is to ministry. That's what the Bible says. But yet the preachers are the ones that sat there in the forefront with their mouth flapping the ones who got bullseyes on them. When it should be the entire body of Christ in the fight. People say you should not get it tied up. We're, we're pilgrim or seal. So was Abraham. So was David. So was all the tribes of Israel, and they all had to do something that God told them to do. Fight at times. Fight at times. When you are to adhere to the Word of God, when you are to obey, when you are to, to be subject to the powers that be in America, once again, what are the powers that be in America? What's the supreme law of the land? The Constitution. It is not Washington, D.C., regardless of what the liberal biased media has brainwashed you into believing. They actually work for you. Believe that? You pay their checks. You pay their payrolls. They are supposedly there representing what you want. Supposedly. And there's amendments and there's things set aside to where one of a government is out of control, there are steps that you have to take to remove said government. That's where we find ourselves now. We're going to get into the Constitution, Lord willing. And then I'm going to share with you the world Constitution that I read to you about three or four years ago when we were up the road about 10 or 15 miles. Yeah, I have a copy of the world Constitution. That's why they're trying to destroy our Constitution so that we'll all fall into a global governance. There's a, there's a regime, God prophesied about that through the, the Holy Spirit's teachings called the Antichrist government. That was going to be total governance. But global governance, if you didn't have the mark, you wouldn't buy, you wouldn't eat. That's where all this is going. That's why it is important why you stand now. Now, America is going to supplant. The Bible says it, but where are you going to go down in history? It does matter. It matters. Is it the difference between two years and 20 years? Could be. But if you give up and run, or if you don't stand up in the gap, you're going to be just like those Jews boxed card up on those rail cars getting shipped off the death plant. I know, can't happen here. As the Puritan movement grew stronger, so did the kings. He, he, also, he was angered by this, and he, the government, the, the, and, and the, which was ran through the church and they had these little Stuart kings. James I and Charles I, they were some brutal, brutal people. They, des they despised the Puritans. Not only did they despise the Puritans, but they tried to take away all their freedoms, had them fearing for their day-to-day -day lives, their day-to-day -day bread. So it made that journey to a new faraway land not so scary anymore compared to what they were living to. So they boarded ships. They came to America. They settled New England. That's why it's called New England. The colonies were spread out. They were pretty much left alone for a while. Uh, then as we know, we had to fight the Revolutionary War. One thing led to another, but they, but they originally came for religious freedom. And the most of the people settled in the southern colonies, the South. That's the reason we are called the Bible Belt to this day. Uh, there was more people found, Brother Charlie found out yesterday when he went to the Biltmore State, as I told y'all a few weeks ago, the Biltmore State had electricity before anybody on the East Coast did. Before any building in New York was erected, before anything in Chicago was erected, the Biltmore State, right there in a little bitty Asheville, North Carolina, had electricity, heated swimming pools, 
in the 1700s. That's something to behold if you've never went and seen that place. But the South was happening, and it was blessed. They were teaching kids how to read the Word of God. They were starting schools in order to teach kids how to read the Word of God, not to better themselves, to give them careers. And so many parents want to send their kids off, send little Johnny off and little, little Tammy off. Go get a career so you can better yourself. It used to be go to school so you can learn to read God, the Word of God so that you might be saved, which is really the only thing that matters in this life. Really, it is. Now, this knowledge being power, what was the original intent of the uh, forefathers? What was the original intent of the founding fathers? Now, 225 years ago, as I stated last week, there was this thing took place called the Constitutional Convention to where men sat around, hashed out, even down to brawling outside at times what was and what was not to be in the Constitution. I want to share some things with you. Uh, the, the, uh, the original framework for the creation of the U.S. government, the, the federal government, which who everybody seems to be so afraid of right now, the federal government was designed to protect, preserve, and to promote these union of states. That was, that's their, that was their job, to protect us as, as a nation from outside sources. Protect, preserve, and promote the states. The states. Now, while being limited in its authorities, uh, in order to preserve, listen to this, the basic rights of the individual states and the American people. The U.S. Constitution is the law of the land. So you can see why they want to get rid of the United States Constitution. Because it is the law of the land. We, the people, the United States of America, we are the law of the land. And they want it in Washington. They're illegal. They're not American. We've been infiltrated, we're under siege, and everybody still just keeps going with their day-to-day -day activity like every day is just going to keep on coming. You remember the, the constrictor, how he kills its prey? He squeezes it, right? He squeezes it tight. And every time you exhale, he tightens up a little more. So the next breath is harder to take. That's what's happening right now, people. You're being tightened and tightened and tightened upon until you're not going to be able to suck a bit of wind. That's what's happening. Everybody's being corralled and pushed in and ushered into little corners without panic, of course, because they don't want you to run away. But you need to see it coming and not be afraid, but start pointing fingers at the snakes where they're at. Would you turn your baby loose in the front yard with a rattlesnake in there? No, you wouldn't. You'd be saying, screaming snake, 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 snake. Why ain't you doing the same thing now? Is your neighbor no more important to you than your grandkids? The Bible said that we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor just like that, as ourselves. I love people. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. There's a lot of folks going to hell. I'm sick and tired of prostate, uh, or, or what do you call them, reprobate liberals posing as Americans swimming this country into the pit of hell. Sick and tired of it. Because they don't represent America. They sure don't represent me. And I don't know about the rest of you. But I just don't see where all the opposition is. And I don't see where all the opposition is. If it don't come from the church, if the church don't stand up for the right, who does? If our morals, if, if our standards are not, are not the foundation, if, if, if it is not set on absolutes as we read them in the Word of God, then whose morals and whose standards do we go by? Russia's? China's? A UN delegation? God help us. God help us. They'll pray to Buddha, Allah, a straw monkey, anything else. They don't care. They know not God. You better know where your faith is. People, please start getting involved. The founding document 
has been called the wisdom of the ages and it was crafted purposely to serve as a foundational base for our system of governance in order to form a more perfect union, not of the, the federal government, but of the states so that Tennessee could get along better with North Carolina and Carolina could get along better with South Carolina and South Carolina could get along better with Georgia and Alabama and Mississippi had nothing to do with the federal government. The only thing it had to do with the federal government was limiting its control and its power. Now, these founding fathers, their original intent was to set up a constitution that would form a more perfect union and protect the basic ideals of individual freedom for the states and most importantly for the individual and our uh, inalienable individual rights from the federal government or any tyranny that may rise against us, whether it be foreign or domestic. Yes, sir, let's, say, let's say you haven't been pushed under tyranny. Have you not? Let me ask you a question. Our highway systems are built by who? State workers, highway workers that work on whose tax dollars? Yours. You buy cars to drive on those roads that your taxes built. You pay taxes on the cars that drive on the roads that your taxes built. Your taxes pay for the police officers that will cruise those roads, pull you over, and the people that you pay their salaries to will give you tickets. While their salary is paid by the tax money that you pay them to patrol the roads that your tax dollars have built. You're not feeling the tyranny yet? And then they'll tell you you can't wear a seatbelt in the car that you have bought with your money and you've paid taxes. Should you wear a seatbelt? Well, sure. Should it be mandatory? Well, no. If I'm stupid enough to go without a seatbelt, it ought to be my stupidity. It ought to be my choice. Right? They've got choice to slaughter babies in the womb. Why do you want to protect me so bad? Because it's not about protection. It's about tyranny. It's about control. Same thing as we're, as we're leading up. And I'm, I'm, for a lack of time, we're going to have to get ready to close today. These shootings are not about safety for children. It is about control. It is about taking away your Second Amendment right. Your Second Amendment right protects the rest of your rights. You lose your Second Amendment right, the rest of them fall by default. That means you no longer have a First Amendment right, your freedom to speak. They'll say, stop preaching the gospel, and if you don't, they'll have you put down. You said, oh, it can't happen. The Bible says it does, people. Amen. The Bible says it does happen. Not that it can, but that it's going to. So the quicker we realize this and the quicker we look at, at it, the reality of where we're at, the more effective we can be in propagation of the gospel and in defending your homeland against tyranny, whether it be foreign or domestic. When I swore my oath in, when I was standing there, before they took me to Paris Island to train me as a Marine, I swore an oath to the Constitution and to the American people, not to Washington, D.C. or to a rogue president. And so did everybody else that's ever been in the military or the armed forces or law enforcement. They have took an oath to protect the Constitution. The President of the United States took an oath to protect the Constitution. He must have had his fingers and toes crossed. It'd be funny if it wasn't so serious. Well, yeah, it would be funny. And sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. But they are destroying us. And it's as if people are not saying anything. A lot of people are saying something, but, it, but they're not getting heard. We're heard. We're heard in almost 36 nations, and people are praying for us. People are praying for America. And people are praying for Israel because they see what's going on. There's a lot of people know what's going on, biblically speaking. But at the same time, the shocking fact is there's a lot of people that don't. And they're inside the churches, brother. The ones that don't are inside the churches that don't see what's going on. They're still looking for their house on the hill. They're still looking for their diamonds and gold. They're still looking for their blessings now. Because that's the God they have been brought up to believe in. One that if you do good enough and if you give enough, you'll become rich and never have to work again in your life. It's not the God of the Bible. 
as a soul to contrary, this one, you know, when they first produced the Constitution, there's a lady stood up and she asked Benjamin Franklin after this conventional convention was over, she said, what is it, sir, that you have just given us? And Benjamin Franklin, uh, Franklin looked at her, Franklin, and he replied, he said, a republic, if you can keep it. You see, there's so many people that don't even realize we live in a republic. They think we live in a democracy. No. It is a republic with some forms of democracy in order to vote in elected officials that when they don't do their jobs, you get rid of them. We are a republic, not a democracy. See, people do not even know their own history of their own nation. Because I'm not going to ask you to hold hands or, or raise your hands up, but how many of you have read the Constitution of the United States? How many have you read the articles, the amendments to the Constitution of the United States? How many have you read your Bill of Rights? Those of you that have can see them getting shredded and thrown out the windows in front of us. Those of you that haven't can't see nothing coming because you're dumb to it. If you haven't read the Constitution, it takes you about 30 minutes to read it. Sit down. If you don't have access to one, myself, either one is, anybody with a computer can print you off a copy of, of the Constitution and the amendments and the Bill of Rights. I strongly suggest between now and next Sunday's message, you read those. Read your Constitution, read the amendments, and read the Bill of Rights so you'll have a little bit more about what's at stake soon how we're forging into this world Constitution. The Lord willing, we'll pick up here next week with our Constitution, and then we might start trying to expose some of the world Constitution next week, which is in Obamacare and everything else that people are so can't see coming. Shocking. God is in control. Jesus is at the right end of the Father. We're not appointed His wrath, but the wrath of man is going to get pretty ugly. And according to scriptures, there's fixing to be some intervention. Pray for Israel. Although they're enemies, according to the gospel, they're beloved for the Father, for the elect's sake. Pray for the nation of Israel. Pray for their, their peace, their safety. They get bombarded every day and you never hear a thing about it. Pray for America because we've got missiles going to Muslim nations now that can reach our homeland coming from here coming from here we're giving missiles to people who want to kill us imagine that it's not like he's a fox in the hen house questions or comments